What is up, everybody? Thank you for stopping by to talk a trio of Dynasty trades involving one Sam Laporta. If you want to go ahead and jump to the first of the three deals, by all means, not bothered at all. But before I get there, my name is Chu. You can check me out on Twitter or, of course, here on YouTube at Father Dynasty. So looking at Sam Laporta, the he is he's the stud. He is the heir apparent, the tight end heir apparent, uh, ending his rookie season with 14.1 fantasy points per game. That is sandwiched uh, almost perfectly in the middle of an Evan Ingram with 13.5 and Travis Kelsey, ever heard of him, 14.6. So again, a tremendous rookie season. So often we talk about tight ends. It takes them a bit of time to adapt. It's blocking schemes. It's just kind of the speed and the pace of the NFL. Laporte is there. I promise he's there. So one thing that I think is key, again, outside of his per-game production, the best ability is availability. And I feel like that, it almost feels like a get off my lawn kind of thing. It just feels like the old person thing to say, but he played in all 17 games. And while this isn't really encapsulated in uh, this 14.1 fantasy points per game, battling through the knee injury, getting through the playoffs and everything, again, I understand the Lions did not make it to the Super Bowl, but as far as they've made it, what they've been growing there with the culture, with the talent, again, all all behind Dan Campbell, uh, it's pretty incredible. And I would say Sam Laporta is a tremendous part of that. Looking at his rookie season, averaging just about seven targets a game, 21% target share, almost one red zone target per game. Again, huge part of this Lions offense. And this is after you see Jared Goff, who, again, it's so funny to see kind of how this ended up working out with the Lions. Jared Goff was the, essentially, offsetting contract for the Matt Stafford deal. And, well, Jared Goff, for some reason, can't jive well with Sean McVay. He goes over to Detroit, where you've got the first-time head coach talking about biting people's kneecaps off, and Jared Ga- Jared Goff jives with that, and he's in that offense. And, again, it was rougher, again, when Dan Campbell first came in, but building each and every year, getting better, getting better, and the the record showed it as well. So looking at that, looking at them spending that first on Jameer Gibbs, again, paying the money for David Montgomery. You have Amon Ross and Brown, obviously. Hawkinson's out of town. You bring in Sam Laporta. Love to see it. Love to see this production. Uh, the Lions offense is, you know, exciting. The defense is, is strong. The offensive line as a part of the offense, of course, is second to none, top tier. Uh, but just to put it in perspective for how well Sam Laporta did in his rookie season, so of his fellow top tight ends, uh, so looking at Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson, George Kittle, and Evan Ingram, uh, those were the other, of the top six in the points per game, those were the other five. Laporta outproduced all of them in their rookie seasons and... In Laporta's rookie season with the 14.1 fantasy points per game, outproduced all those guys in their sophomore seasons, excluding Kittle, who was a shade above that. So just in the perspective of when we compare, you know, Laporta to the other known tight ends we think about now in their rookie seasons, even if they took, you know, a year to ramp up and then their second year was good, that's how well Laporta did this year. Only Kittle beat him out. So I think that has to be pointed out in terms of what we thought about. Again, I understand the profile about the Kyle Pitts. He had a tremendous rookie season. You can blame it on Arthur Smith, you know, blame it on Desmond Ritter. I know I do. But Sam Laporta, an absolute stud. And just to kind of point that out here, so in keep trade cut, he's the tight end one ahead of uh, Trey McBride and TJ Hawkinson. I'm in lockstep with that. He is my tight end one in Dynasty. I think he's probably most people's tight end one in Dynasty, even after Travis Kelsey continuing to have this uh, tremendous, tremendous playoff run. Uh, And, of course, making to the Super Bowl. This is being recorded before that. I anticipate he still will also have a tremendous Super Bowl as well. Uh, But Sam Laporta, tremendous season. My tight end one in Dynasty, I assume most people's. 
and check out the rest of my Dynasty rankings and uh, some of my fellow content creators there at goingfor2.com. And, of course, we've got our rookie rankings coming out as well for this 2024 class, too. So jumping over to the first of the three deals, this one's pretty clean and simple. 12 teams start 10 full point PPR and half point 10 in premium. So we've got Sam Laporta and a 2024 second for Devon A. Chan, still working on the name, and Trey McBride. So, hmm. Trey McBride has had a tremendous ascension into dynasty relevance. And Devon A. Chan, of course, in his, a couple of those games, no one could have kept up that pace, the per game pace of what he was doing. Again, he's on a tremendous offense. I think when people that were high on him then saw him go to the Dolphins, they thought it could not have been a better situation for him. And his production, even with when it was a healthy Mostert, Raheem Mostert, still did tremendously well. And more importantly, when there was injury with Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, what have you, Devon Achan stepped up and did tremendously well. And it's not just his receiving ability. It's his, you know, on the ground, getting to the outside, shifty, explosive. Again, everything of what we thought of him coming out of college, but when we see that size, there's always the concern, you know, the size, the BMI, whatever, but someone that quick, that explosive, again, with that good of hands, most specifically in that Dolphins offense, you got to buy into that. But what I would say here is I... I kind of try to pair things up just to kind of see how I think of it. So I have Laporta over McBride, as of course is my tight end one. And well, this is the tricky thing. We're in the dynasty off season. It's very early in the off season. Again, Devon HN is going to be a staple in this Miami Dolphins offense next season. I think he really started hitting a stride the later in the year. But for me, I'm still taking Laporta in the second. I don't know where the second is landing. It is 2024, but I don't know where it's landing. But when I look at this, of course, I know Laporta will be easier to move than McBride if I have to, God forbid. Despite the minor premium, I would simply have the be- want the better tight end. And when I think of the 2024 second, if I need, for some reason, to instead of draft, I, I kind of see the lay of the land where it turns up with free agents and that sort of thing, and I want to... Instead, trade for another wide receiver or a veteran running back who has signed and landed in a good spot, whatever, then I can do that. It offers a little bit of flexibility. This is one where you can pick the Laporta in the second side and be kicking yourself because of how well Achan did. Maybe not those first those couple of games he had over the whole season, but then he could get injured because of you know, the fragility of the running back position and the revolving door that the Dolphins kind of have there with, I mean, it's Mostert, Wilson, Ahmed. It's it, it's whoever they need it to be. So you could be kicking yourself for that, or you could pick, again, if the safe pick is Laporta in a second, I'll take that. So I'm taking Laporta in the second. Jumping over to the second deal, 12 teams start 11, full point PPR, half point 10 in premium. Uh, this one's... A little bit more, a little bit inch, more interesting, I think. And this is Jake Ferguson and Josh Allen for Sam Laporta, Kyler Murray, 24 first and a 24 second. So for me, Josh Allen, he's my quarterback one in Dynasty. Uh, this is, if it wasn't said already, of course, these are all super flex. So tremendous value put on the quarterback position. So you do have a quarterback on each side, so there's not a kind of that weird imbalance there of not getting a quarterback back, of sending one away. But, of course, for my love of Jake Ferguson, again, I'm so glad, so glad that he did so well. I mean, leading into the season, this guy was forgotten. They didn't know if it was going to... Some people sincerely didn't know if it was going to be Jake Ferguson or Peyton Hendershot. I don't know why. You saw what Ferguson did. You saw that they didn't put it... I mean, again, I know they had... us. Uh, had drafted Schoonmaker in the second, which I was confused by. But somewhat thankfully, because of Schoonmaker getting injured preseason, Jake Ferguson had that chance to step up and be kind of second fiddle to CeeDee Lamb in terms of just that trust with Dak Prescott. Um, but despite my love for Jake, uh, Jake Ferguson there, Sam Laporta, number one guy right there. 
And it's always tough when you have someone like a Josh Allen, again, my dynasty quarterback one, comparing him to who are you going to trade to get him and what do you need to add to kind of for that to make sense. With this being a 12-team start 11, depth is key here. And for me, I like Kyler Murray. He's back. He's healthy. I like that coaching staff. I think they can add some more weapons around him here, having a 24 first and 24 second. Whether you make both of those picks, whether you pair them together to make another move, whether you make one and take the other one to pair, I think overall I'm taking the Laporta-Murray first and second side. I think there's enough kind of value and production there and the players you already have in that with Laporta and Murray, but then you also have the first and the second to make other moves if you need to. But if you have to make the pick, I don't think you're in a tough spot. It depends on where that pick is, obviously. Um, and it's always tough to send away Josh Allen, but, you know, for me, I, I trust that. And it's a minor tight end premium. It's more just the comfort of knowing it's a set it and forget it, Sam Laporta. Kyler Murray, I think, is going get, to get back to his old ways and be that, that steady uh, QB1. Maybe not top three, maybe not top five, but again, I think top ten is fair. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. Third and final deal. This is a 10-team start 11. Full point PPR, one point tight end premium. This one was interesting, and when I was so quick to pick a side, I was almost nervous as to how quick it I, w- I picked based on these names here. So we've got Sam Laporta and Christian McCaffrey, as you see by Panthers gear behind me, for... Brandon Ayuk, Josh Jacobs, TJ Hawkinson, and Austin Eckler. I get it. I get it why the season Ayuk had, the presumption is the Niners are going to re-sign him, I would, I would assume. Josh Jacobs, I don't know. I do, however, think he was one of the guys alongside you know, Mason Crosby and Devontae Adams to lobby to keep Antonio Pierce, though, so... Does that mean Josh Jacobs takes somewhat of a hometown discount to stay in Vegas, whether it be on a, another one-year deal or maybe a two-year deal? I don't know. Um, and TJ Hawkinson, again, you know, top three dynasty receiver, or tight end, excuse me, for sure. Austin Eckler, very down year. When he wanted to do, have his contract negotiation, uh, have a little bump there before the season, Chargers called his bluff. Eckler proceeded to have uh, a down year, for sure. The team did as a whole, but again, Austin Eckler being a bit older for running back, he plays a brand of football, I think, that lends itself more favorably to playing, you know, into the later part of his career. But does he stay in L.A.? I assume not. I assume if they couldn't come to an extension before and he had the year that he just had, I can only imagine what deal they're going to try and cut him at this point. So he's going elsewhere. And who knows? I mean, he could, he could very well just be looking for that uh, deal to sign a one-year deal maybe and go to a contender, whoever he believes to be a contender uh, going into 2024. Josh Jacobs could be the same thing. Again, I think he goes back to the Raiders, but I'm not sure. But when I look at the other side, Sam Laporta, Christian McCaffrey, again, as you see the stuff behind me, this is Christian McCaffrey jersey right there. Laporta, you get the tight end one in Dynasty. And again, it's not tight end one just in terms of perceived value and liquidity. It is literally the tight end one in 2023. Not on a pregame basis. I think he was three or four. But then you also get Christian McCaffrey, who, an aging running back, and again, there's only so many running backs during the offseason, certainly older, that I would want to trade for. If I'm getting sincerely, potentially, the tight end one and RB one and dynasty, like as in, in 2024, they can both finish there. And this being a 10 team start 11. I want that. I, I know the value. I know his age. Jacobs, again, he's a bit older as a running back, but again, not too, not as, quite as old as McCaffrey. Hawkinson, again, top three dynasty tight end. Eckler, I think in the later, later stages of his career, but not done yet by any means. And again, has that pass catching ability is going to be huge for PPR. But I'm taking Sam Laporta and Christian McCaffrey every time. But let me know what you think about these three deals, these three Sam Laporta deals. Also let me know, 
Maybe did you have a Sam Laporta deal that you recently did, or do you have one in the hopper in the inbox that you are considering or that you're kind of kind of trying to put together and trying to send out? Drop in the comments. Let me know in there. Of course, I've, the community and everybody kind of comment on that. Uh, it's not groupthink. It's kind of just the trying to pass it through other people just to kind of like you see it one way. What, what do other people think? You know, do you think you can get this deal done or do you think this even makes sense? Uh, so kind of hearing about, you know, what your leak settings are and that sort of thing, kind of dropping it in there. Love to talk Dynasty trades every single day. So please go ahead and do that. And happy Dynasty.